Lymphatic Filariasis by Ola, Cassandra, Pauline, Yulia, and Rochelle. Lymphatic filariasis is an infection that is acquired through the transmission of a parasite from a mosquito. It is a painful and overwhelmingly disfiguring disease that affects the lymphatic areas of the body. The most common areas affected are the scrotum, penis, legs, arms, vulva, and breasts. The infection occurs usually in childhood, however, visible manifestations do not become pronounced until later life. It can cause temporary or permanent disability. Four stages of lymphatic filariasis are asymptomatic amicrofilomatic stage, asymptomatic microfilomatic stage, acute manifestation stage, and obstructive or chronic lesions. The parasitic larvae transmitted by mosquitoes that cause to lymphatic filariasis are Wicheriria, Bancrophy, Brugia malai, and Brugia timori. The pathophysiology of lymphatic filariasis starts with introduction of the parasite. Once the parasitic larvae are deposited on the person's skin, where they then enter the body through sight, where mosquito bite occurs. Once the larva have entered the body, they travel through the lymphatic vessel. Over a period of 6 to 12 months, the larva will develop into worms. The worms then cause damage and dilation of the lymphatic vessels, which leads to parapatologic elephantiasis, lymphoedema, and hydrocolor. Over time, the worms produce millions of amateur microfilaria that we have circulate in the peripheral blood. Lymphatic filariasis is associated with people who live in countries that are affected by poverty and poor sanitation. Climate is an important factor for lymphatic filariasis because it influences the breeding of mosquitoes. Countries that are affected are located in the tropics and subtropics region, contributing to an optimum temperature between 20 and 30 degrees Celsius and with a humidity of 70%. Examples of these countries are parts of South Asia, Africa, South America, Central America, and Western Pacific. There are seven stages of lymphatic filariasis that are based on the presence of absence of edema, folds, knobs, massive food, and disability. The stages are as follows. First stage is Swelling that is irreversible at night, abscess of skin folds, skin is smooth and appears normal. In second stage, swelling is not reversible at night. On stage 3, shallow skin folds are present. On fourth stage, skin is irregular with presence of knobs and nodules. In stage 5, deep skin folds are present. And in stage 6, six skin is irregular and what like lesions appear on the top of foot and toes. A last stage is stage 7, and person requires aids with ADLs such as walking, bathing, use of bathroom, and because dependent on family or our healthcare system. Lymphatic filariasis is commonly treated with drug therapy. In the acute stage, the drug therapy treatment is offered as a single dose of two drug treatment regimen that is capable of reducing microfilaria to near zero level for one or more years, as well as still adult one. The drugs given are albendazole with ivermectin in areas where oncokeriasis is endemic, or diethyl carbamazin where oncokeriasis is not endemic. In the chronic stage, where lymphedema is present, the treatment goal becomes maintenance and aims towards improving lymphatic circulation with the use of non-stretch compression bandages. Communities that are affected by lymphatic filariasis should be taught ways to prevent further spread of the parasite. The following are methods of prevention. First and foremost is basic skin care. Individuals should bath using clean water and soap, following bathing proper drying of all areas, especially creases. Then proper moisturizing of the skin to prevent dryness and skin cracks. Finally, this individual should wear proper fitted footwear at all times. Secondly, nail care. When individuals are cutting nails, 
they must make sure that the nails are cut to an appropriate level, ensuring there is no dirt underneath the nails or that skin does not get cut, causing open areas for entry of parasite. Finally, individuals should prevent further exposure to bite by using a mosquito net and ensuring proper cleanliness to prevent mass breeding of mosquitoes. This can be done by teaching community the importance of eliminating any stagnant water when 